So let's say you're the uh, editor-in-chief or head of publishing at one of the big comic companies or even one of the small ones. And you have one thing to do, just one. You can do one, anything you want. Well, with one caveat, I'll tell you in a minute. But anything you want to make a top-selling comic book, what are you going to do? Hey everybody, this is Perch. This is uh, Idea Time, and I'll give you a couple of mine, but I'm interested in what you have to say. So after a couple of days, I'll come back and we'll walk through some of your ideas and kind of talk about the feasibility of everything. Of course, this is my opinion, so you may have an absolutely perfect, would definitely work opinion uh, on all this that I don't think will work, but it turns out you're right. So don't give up, even if I disagree, don't give up on your dreams, etc. But um, the, the scenario is this. You have just been made head of Marvel or DC or Image or whatever you, you pick, whatever company you want to, to deal with, um, or maybe a brand new company. Maybe you're going to make the, the company of online comics, and it's, it's a brand new publishing house. Anyway, you can do anything you want. You have unlimited whatever it is for one, basically one thing, one, uh, one shot, one uh, one shot, one opportunity. Um, <laughs> you you get to do one thing. What is that one thing that you are convinced is the surefire way to have a top selling comic book? Now, one caveat, because there's one cheat in all this that I just want to take off the table right now, because I do think it would work in all cases. The only thing you can't do is hire the absolute two best creators in the world and put them on your title. So for example, to say, I'm going to take, uh, you know, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, we're going to put them on X-Men and, uh, you know, and then I'm going to sit back and watch the money rolling. No, I, a little bit harder than that. So um, I don't mind if you want to fantasy pick certain things you want to do with creators or how you're going to pay them or how you're going to put them on books or that kind of stuff. I don't mind any of that. Uh, but it, it, you know, the one piece I'll, I'll kind of rule out is no just saying I'm going to take Art Adams and magically he's able to draw all the comic books in my house. <laughs> you know, my company and he's on all of them. No, 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 nothing like that. You know, I'd like for you, your idea to at least be, um, physically possible, if not, you know, financially possible, just physically possible. Like, like, you know, I, I, I somehow wire up my comics to people's brains and then they can't escape them. And I make all the money that that's, you know, that make, like, pull it in a little bit, but what's your one idea of something that would definitely be money. So here's, here's a couple of mine. You can agree, you can disagree, you can add to them, whatever it is. One thing, and I'll, I'll give one for big companies, one for small independent companies. So for big companies, I think to, to just simply market a, you know, a, basically reveal your hand a little bit to your audience and say, for the next year, um, we are going to make a core, you know, pick the 10 titles, core you know, Spider-Man book, Captain America book, uh, X-Men book, Avengers book, Hulk book, etc. And in that time, we're going to bring classic uh, villains to the table. We're going to bring, you know, top artists. I'm not going to pick an, a specific artist, but just good, good talent. We're going to invest in it. We're basically going to go one year where uh, we may or may not make money because we're going to dump a bunch of money in the creative into the comics. And we're going to make a year's worth of just the most classic story we can. When I say classic, I mean, we'll become a classic like something that is a really kind of definitive uh, run on the character. I'm going to exclude any pitches that uh, say that this will be a shocking new direction or a bold new take, or we're going to take the you know, Spider-Man out of the costume and we're going to put in you know, some homeless guy in the street that gets spider power for some reason, whatever it happens to be. We're going to, we're going to ignore all those and we're going to say this is going to be 20 years from now, We'll collect 12 issues, one year's worth of Spider-Man comics into one volume, and it will be like, this is a definitive one-year arc of Spider-Man, one-year arc of Captain America, one-year arc of Iron Man, Hulk, all the big characters, Captain Marvel, all the, all the, you know, the big characters, this is what we're going to do. And that would be my, and, and same thing, Batman, Superman, Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman. We're not going to do any kind of experimental stuff. The pitch has to align to kind of the... What core things that make the character great? We want the pitch to be big and crazy, but not crazy. <laughs> big, big and adventurous, big and wild, big and and uh, and interesting, but not insane. Like I don't want to hear any pitches like, "Well, we're going to completely turn the multiverse all around, and we're going to 
uh, create this, these, these new super villains that nobody's heard of. And they're going to, no, no, just, you know, boring old pitch of classic hero, classic character, classic villains, huge threats, some kind of big thing, 12 issue arc go. That's, 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 that's what I do for the big two for, for independence, a little bit different. If, if I want to like make money, as an independent, I would say, all right, I'm going to, again, kind of communicate to my fans, to my audience, that I'm going to have a, a book for every major genre. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to commission, let's say, eight books. And I'm going to have a horror book that leans into horror. And I'm going to get an artist who is great at horror and a writer who has a great horror pitch. And I'm going to, I'm going to book it. I'm going to bill it. I'm going to market it as the horror book that my company is producing. And I'm going to do the same thing for romance, for a Western, for sci-fi, for, uh, you know, just th these different genres. Have one Kate book, sure, why not? And just say, I've got, you know, very, very clean. I've got one book in each of these genres. I'm going to print eight books, let's say, eight genres. Here's what I've got. I'm not going to try and cross them over, do any other cra crazy stuff. And I'm basically going to really lean into the fact that I've got a book in each genre. I'm going to really promote the fact that, hey, if, uh, if you know, we have, we're, we're going to curate top talent that really fits the genre. We're not going to try and cram. We're not going to like take faith and make it a horror book. We're going to, it's, it's a you know, new character, new property, whatever else. But we're going to try and commission and make the best damn horror book we can and the best sci-fi book we can and the best comedy and the best, you know, whatever it happens to be. And I'm really going to lean into the genre aspect almost more than the titles at front to kind of stake out the ground of my company is going to produce um, a title for every particular interest, or at least these, these eight interests. And I'm going to try and just, just, you know, really align the talent to those genres. Those are, that's what I would do. If I was starting out with a brand new company, my own money, that's how I would pitch it. That would be the marketing approach to say, you know, because for example, we have a lot of these new companies coming out. NBC Universal is going to do something, but look at um, uh, Artisan Artisans, right? The the uh, th that new company that comes out. They've got some titles, but it's like we've got some comics, and they're going to be bold, exciting, direction, whatever. But it's really not clear what they've staked out. Is it a dystopian future with some hero elements? I'm sure, but I would go really aggressively into fitting these categories. And in some cases I would cheat. I would go to like Netflix and I'd say, okay, what are the eight categories they promote? Here they are. I'm going to have a comic for each one of those categories. No, I'm not trying to sell it all off to Netflix, but what I am going to do is say, I, I, uh, you know, if you go to, if you go to Netflix, you got TV shows for these categories. If you go to my comics company, you got comics in each of these categories. That's the plan here. One and two. So anyway, those are kind of two ideas and I, I've got a million more, but I really want to hear yours. So what's your money-making, surefire, can't miss. This is what a comic company should do to be super successful. Leave a comment below, write it all out. Um, I will come back, like I said, in a few days. I'm going to read them. I'm going to, we'll, we'll analyze them. Probably be a couple of videos if people contribute a lot, but swing for the fences. Let's hear your amazing, amazing idea. Again, please know uh, I would just put Art Adams on everything. That, that you know, if that's what you really believe, I mean, go for it, but, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more than that would be, would be wonderful. Anyway, like subscribe because okay, you want to be around when uh, we come back and we look at all this stuff. And I think it'll be a lot of fun to kind of hear your ideas of what you want to do in comics. So um, like I said, like subscribe, follow me on social media, send me an email at comicsperch at gmail.com. And thanks for listening.